I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. Make y'all comfortable. Next to me is the Lamborghini Urus, an SUV made by a supercar manufacturer. Strange times we live in, but it's actually not the first time Lamborghini has done this. From 1986 to 1992, Lambo produced the LM002, the most powerful, most insane truck that money could buy. What was originally supposed to come equipped with a roof-mounted machine gun and bulletproof armor quickly transformed into a super SUV as the US military decided to invest more money into the Humvee. And that was an amazing thing because it meant the LM002 was born. There was nothing like it. And that was in 1986. And that brings us to today, 2018, with Lamborghini's new SSUV, the Urus. It's fast, it's aggressive, and it is distinctly Lamborghini. In fact, it is even good at off-roading. Now, what could convince Lamborghini to do something like this, considering the success of the Huracan and the Aventador? Why not keep just doing that? Well, progress and money. Creating SUVs is the way of the future, and Lamborghini wanted their slice of the pie. Create something slightly cheaper than the Huracan that can convince an entire new genre of buyers to become acquainted with the brand. Think of it, justifying a two-door supercar can be difficult. Even though this costs over $200,000, it's actually practical and can be used on a daily basis. That means a ton of new consumers for the Lamborghini brand and more money. Now, more money means more research and development budget. It means better launch parties, and it means better supercars. So, the next generation of Ventador and Huracan, with all of the revenue from this, is going to be insane. Under the hood of the Lamborghini Urus is a four liter twin turbocharged V8. Similar V8 to the Panamera Turbo S, the Cayenne, and the RS7, only it makes a heck of a lot more horsepower. 641 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. That's right, those are supercar levels of performance in an SUV. And the best part is peak torque happens at just 2,250 RPMs, meaning this has more low-end torque than any Lamborghini before it. And the craziest part is zero to 60 happens in 3.4 seconds. That's right, that is benchmark resetting for an SUV or for a road car in general, and it has the highest top speed in the world for an SUV at 190 miles per hour. So what does the V8 sound like? Good, really, really good. It burbles, it cracks, it pops, it has overrun almost like a supercar, but in an SUV. In fact, I have never heard anything like this, and I may dare say, it's the best sounding SUV in the world. But how about I let you listen to it for yourself? It's the first V8 in a Lamborghini since 1988, and it begs the question, what's in store for the future of Lamborghinis? Does this mean that we might have a V8 in future supercars down the road? I guess only time will tell. 
Let's move on to the styling. In front, the grille is both imposing and elegant all at the same time. It's absolutely enormous. It just looks right. Now, above that, we've got these beautiful LED headlamps with this Y design, and if you come up close, it's actually got one of the most interesting patterns to the LED that I have ever seen. Little details like that that make this car worth the money. Now over in the front, we've got the camera system that houses some of the most advanced electronics I've ever seen. When you're actually in the car parking and maneuvering in tight spaces, the clarity of the cameras are unlike anything I have seen. And all of the options you get, well, more on that in another video. I'm absolutely in love with the design element in body color that comes through here and just how aggressive the front splitter really is. And all of the little undulations throughout the front bumper that just make it look unique. Coming up to the hood, we've got that gorgeous Y design again. It feels bulbous and meaty, letting onlookers know that we've got something crazy underneath the hood. Around the side, we've got enormous 22 inch wheels that just enhance its imposing presence. We've also got a series of lines and vents that help this stand out from the crowd. We've got this nice triangular shaped vent here and all of the cuts in the body line just make it look so much more aggressive than you're used to seeing, especially this line here that goes all the way back and then cuts right there. It also has from the factory fender flares that depending upon the spec, some are painted in a different color and others are in body color. I think in white, the black juxtaposed against it looks fantastic. The rear three quarters angle on the Urus is fantastic and really shows off how sloped the rear deck lid is, making it look more like a coupe. I think it looks awesome. It's also got an enormous rear spoiler here and the rear window itself has such a unique shape. Everything about this is unique and nothing ordinary. Now we've got the similar Y-shaped design in the rear tail lights as well. We've got two cuts in the sides here to make it look even more athletic. And below it, we have one of the coolest rear diffusers I've ever seen. Incredibly aggressive. It doesn't seem like something you'd find on an SUV. We've also got a quad tip exhaust that looks very Lamborghini. And I think we should probably listen to how that sounds one more time. Then we also have a rear power operated deck lid that opens up like this with 21.75 cubic feet of space. For a Lamborghini, that's a lot of space. We've also got power controls on the side here to raise and lower the tailgate to make it easier or harder for you to get stuff into it. Then we've got a button up here to close it as you'd expect. You can also see a little ski pass through as well. The inside of the Urus is a masterpiece. There are three TFT displays that are completely customizable. You've got one for the speedo and tachometer. You've got one for the infotainment system as well as the backup camera. And then you've got one for the climate and comfort controls. All of the graphics are absolutely stunning and cutting edge. There's even a virtual keyboard that has handwriting recognition on the display. How crazy is that? The interior of the Urus can be customized more than any Lamborghini before it. And depending upon the materials and the colors chosen, you can veer towards a more elegant vibe or you can go all the way to an extremely sporty vibe. The Urus really can do it all and it's just a nice, pleasant place to be. All of the materials and the fit and finish are top notch. This beautiful stitching, the metals, the touch screens, just feel fantastic. If you had any doubts that the Urus wasn't a real Lamborghini, rest assured it is. Even the steering wheel feels like it's straight out of a supercar. The paddle shifters are the best of any SUV I've ever experienced. They're made of metal, they feel great to the touch, and they're the right size. They're also at the nine and three position. Even adjusting the mirrors, it just feels cool. And when you look through the mirrors, you see the rear haunches and 
They're enormous. The seats themselves are comfortable yet aggressive looking and look like they should come out of a supercar and not an SUV, yet here we are and we've got four of them. This can come in either a four or five seat layout and four seats is the way to go. So what does the Urus truly like to drive? Well, let's fire it up and find out. To turn the vehicle on, you flip up this fighter jet style cover and click the start stop button. That is located in between some of the coolest looking switch gear I have ever seen. We've got the Anima lever with seven different driving modes from Strada to Sport to Corsa to Sabia, which means sand to Terra, off-road and Neve for snow. I'll talk a lot more about the individual driving modes in my five insane features video. There's even a seventh driving mode called Ego where you can customize everything to your liking. To start the car, you don't slide it into drive. In fact, when you pull back on this large panel, all it does is put the car into reverse to reveal one of the best backup cameras, if not the best backup cameras I have ever seen on any vehicle. To put it into drive, you pull the right paddle just like you would in any other Lamborghini and off you go. The Urus is all-wheel drive, which is an amazing thing, meaning it's good at inclement weather, but it can also be used actually on the off-road and in the snow. I can't imagine seeing one of these things being driven to the ski slopes, hop out with your skis or snowboards, there's a pass-through right there, and actually use it what it's meant for. Please, if you're watching and you're considering getting a Urus, I'd love to see you use it exactly how it was intended. But even if you don't wanna off-road it, knowing that it is capable is a reassuring feeling. The center differential in the Urus is very cool. It's got a variable torque split and you can send up to 100% of the power to the rear of the Urus and it can flip flop and go up to 85% in the front. The Urus also has rear wheel steering, which means it's more nimble at low speeds when the wheels turn in the opposite direction as the front, and it means it's more stable at high speeds. A really cool thing to have. Now, driving the Urus in Strata mode, it feels composed. It doesn't feel intimidating whatsoever. In fact, the visibility is very, very good. The rear window isn't the largest, but for a Lamborghini, it's the biggest I've ever seen. You sit up higher than you're used to, but it does feel familiar. You've got this gorgeous Y-shaped design in the interior that looks like a fancier Aventador. I honestly wish they put this level of ingenuity and refinement in the rest of their cars. Hopefully it's foreshadowing what's to come because it really is stunning. In Strata mode, the steering is light, the exhaust is quiet, and you feel like you can just cruise along in comfort, like the ultimate commuting vehicle just so happens to look like an insane Lamborghini on the outside, and it does on the inside as well. It's not one of those cars where you forget you're driving mostly because it's so exciting on the inside. You just wanna look and touch everything because it's so cool. Now, flick it into sport mode and the suspension drops by 0.6 inches. The air suspension lowers down and the throttle response is heightened. The car gets a lot louder, the steering is stiffer and it wakens the beast. Then we get to my favorite mode and that is Corsa. The tachometer changes entirely. It opens up the valves and this thing starts to sound absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and floor it. Let's give it some gas. Oh my gosh! You forget <laughs> that this is able to do zero to 60 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds. That is supercar levels. That is really fast supercar levels of quick in an SUV. Oh my God. That is ridiculous. And when we let off the gas, I hope that comes across on the camera, the pops. <laughs> this has to be the best sounding SUV in the world. Oh my God. And the transmission, it's an eight speed ZF unit with paddle shifters. It's very responsive and, ah, oh, this is so awesome. It's unbelievable how composed this feels and how nice it is around corners. I could honestly see you not only driving this to the ski slopes, driving it to an off-road park, driving it to your office and commuting, but also driving it to the track. You legitimately could take this car to the track 
and have fun. That's what happens when it weighs only 4,900 pounds. Incredibly lightweight for an SUV. Oh, it's so much fun in Corsa mode. The shifts bang so hard. The heads up display has all these hexagons. It just looks, oh, I'm having a blast. And I think, I think one of the most important things when you're justifying a $200,000 plus SUV is it has to invoke emotion. There has to be a reason that you want it out and beyond logic because it is expensive. There's no real logic involved in buying a Lamborghini, but that's what makes it so great. You don't buy one because you need one. You need a car to go from point A to point B, but you could argue you could take a bus or you could use a bicycle or you could use public transportation. You don't need a Lamborghini, but you want one. And why do you want a Lamborghini? Well, it's the sound, it's the looks, it's the culture, it's the feeling, it's the emotion. And this invokes that Lamborghini emotion when you flick a downshift and you floor it and you change up through the gears. Oh my God, it is fantastic. And the looks and the interior comfort and all the amenities that it offers are just extras. Those are reasons where you can logically say, okay, well, it's got one of the best backup and camera systems I've ever seen. Okay, it looks really nice, all right? It's easy to drive, it's comfortable, it's spacious. We can put the kids in it and go off-roading. These are all logical reasons to buy it, but the illogical, the above that, the emotion, is there and that's what I, I am falling in love with this thing every second behind the wheel. This is just phenomenal. And the brakes on this thing, oh my gosh, that is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this has to be the best SUV that I have ever driven. Is it worth the money? Absolutely and then some. It's an emotion invoking experience. It's beautiful and it is distinctly Lamborghini. That is why, oh man, I have fallen head over heels in love with the Lamborghini Urus. Special thanks to Lamborghini of Newport Beach for making this review possible. Their inventory is awesome, so are their salespeople. Make sure to check them out if you're thinking of getting a Urus. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.